Today we're creating our own MS-DOS 7.1 installation CD from files found in Windows 98. To get started, let's take a look at the existing MS-DOS 7.1 installation package to see what files are there, so we know what we're looking for. In the DOS 7 folder, we have two compressed files that we will need to extract. We can drag and drop them to the desktop. Once extracted, we can open the archive file. Finally, we have a list of files included in DOS 7.1. Now we can open our Windows 98 installation disk image. To set the right expectation, this is also a multi-step process. Here are the contents of the disk image. In the Windows 98 folder are a number of CAB files. These are both compressed and span across multiple files. We will need to extract everything in this folder. With the CAB files extracted, we can open Catalog03 and extract all the files inside to another new folder. At last, we have a list of files from Windows 98. From here, it is an exercise in locating all the files from DOS 7.1 and moving them to yet another new folder. Not all the files will be there, as some are part of the setup wizard for DOS and others are pulled from different sources. Create a new folder, we can call it DOS7. Now, click on any file in the list from Windows 98 and start typing the name of the file we're looking for. The first file we can pull from Windows 98 is a trib. We can now drag and drop a trib to our DOS7 folder, where we are collecting all the files we will need. The next file we can pull is check disk. Again, click on any file from the list and start typing the name of the file we are looking for. Drag and drop the file to the DOS 7 folder we created. Repeat this step for all the files we need to pull from Windows 98. Time codes will be in the description along with a list of files and their sources. Next, we have choice, followed by command.com, country.sys, debug, del tree, disk copy, display.sys, DOS key, edit. Even though it is not on the list, I'm copying it over anyway. Then we have ega.cpi, emm386. Then we jump a few on the list. We do have extract, no fast help or fast open. fc is here. fdisk, we're definitely going to need that. Find, format, the next file we can get here is hymem.sys. Then we have ifshlp.sys, followed by keyb.com and keyboard.sys. Then we have label, logo.sys, mem, mode, more, move, mscdex, nlsfunk, ramdrive.sys, setver, sort, subst, sys.com, and xcopy. Now switch to the second compressed file from the DOS 7 install CD. We can pull cvt.exe, scandisk, ansi, and iso.cpi. That is the extent of the files we can pull from Windows 98. What we need now is an installation of DOS 6.22 to pull files from. We have a compressed file that contains the virtual hard disk image. We can drag and drop that to the desktop. From here, double click on the file and Windows will mount the disk image as a new volume. It's treated like any other storage attached to the system we can open File Explorer and browse the virtual disk. Now we can pull more files that we are going to need, starting with discomp.com, followed by expand, then we have fast help and fast open, graphics and graphics.pro. Let's also take memmaker, both the application and the help file. Next we have power, and print, replace, and tree. Back to the second compressed file from DOS 7.1. We have msd.exe, qbasic, vsafe, 
sizer, driver.sys, and drive space. There are still a few more files we will need from MS-DOS, but they are on the supplemental disk. We can open VirtualBox and create a new virtual machine. Mount the floppy disk image for the supplemental disk. At the prompt, type setup, followed by the path to our DOS installation directory. Choose A at the prompt for all components. For the display type, we can choose F5 for VGA. Press Y to confirm the selection, and files will start being copied. Press Y on any of their prompts to replace a file, because the supplemental disk should have the newer version of the file. Now we can power off the virtual machine. Double click on the virtual disk image for MS-DOS and head back to File Explorer. We have most of the files from the folder here now. ADOS, COM, OVL, and text. And let's scroll down. Yes, fakemouse.com is here as well. So we can copy all of those to the DOS 7 folder. DOSHelp.com. All of the DOS shell files are here along with DOSSwap.exe. Checkstate.sys. EDLIN. EXE to bin. Load fix. And smart drive. The rest of the files we need come from various websites. Let's start with Cute Mouse. Open a browser and go to cutemouse.sourceforge.net. From this page, click on the download button for zip. Open the file when it finishes downloading. Go to the bin folder, drag and drop ctmouse.exe to the DOS 7 folder. Next, we need DOS long file names. We can just search Google for DOS LFN. The first result I have on Google is the one we want. From this page, we can click on DOS LFN v0.41c. When the download finishes, open it. We want to drag and drop DOSLFN.com to our DOS 7 folder, along with some of these TBL files, 437, 850, 852, 863, 866, 869, 936, and 950. At last, we have all the files we need for DOS 7. We can open our CD-burning software of choice and create an ISO with all of the files we have collected. What we have are all the files for DOS 7, but the ISO isn't bootable and there isn't an installer package, so we need a boot disk. Open a browser and go to allbootdisks.com. From the left-hand navigation bar under the Windows 98 section, click on Download Boot Disks. On the right side of the page, click on Diskette Image, followed by Windows98.img. Open the file and extract the disk image to the desktop. Now we can create a new virtual machine. At the prompt, type FDisk. Choose option 1 to create a new partition. Select option 1 again to make it a primary partition. Select Yes to use the maximum available size. Now restart the computer. From the prompt, type format c colon forward slash s. This will both format the drive and copy over the system files, which will make it bootable. At the prompt, enter c colon and press enter to switch to the c drive. Then enter md dos. This will create a directory for DOS. Remember to mount the ISO file we created. Then copy all of the files over to the DOS folder we just created. At the prompt, type ver. It should show the version as Windows 98. 
we have successfully extracted DOS 7 from Windows 98.